Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of our new uploads. If you'd like more information about the Net Bible Church or how you could donate, please click on the link below. Thank you so much for watching. Your way, Father God. Hallelujah, not our way. Not by the arm of the flesh. Hallelujah. Not by the arm of the flesh, but by your spirit. By your spirit. Hallelujah. Say, Father God, by your spirit, by your spirit alone. Hallelujah. Will your will be done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us in so many places, in so many ways that God has given us. God has given us his people. He's given us his spirit. Jesus taught about him. He exhorted the disciples to not leave without him. Amen. Jesus said if he, we would come to him, he would give us something to drink. And he said he was speaking of the spirit when he said he would give us something to drink. Amen. So all we have to do is go to him. Amen. And get something to drink. And that will be the Holy Ghost. If you need a drink... You just need the Holy Ghost. Amen. You just need you just need one more dose of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need another dose of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. We need you. We want you. And we ask you to do what only you can do. Fill us to overflowing. Fill us to overflowing. Hallelujah. He say baranda di shabro base kise vianda ba de be shibilion de vosavada de shia. I thank you, Father. Come. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, let of Aradasia, by the outpouring of your spirit, as you said you would fall on all flesh, hallelujah, that we would make a decision. As your presence touches our hearts and lives to live for you. Hallelujah. O Shavasegilion, the Bo Shavaradasia. Thank you, Father, in this hour that you are looking, searching to and fro for those that hearts will be fully towards you, those hearts that will serve you, Father God. Hallelujah, 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 Shevianda Vara de Sia to Bola de Shia. Ilionda Vosheva Sevista Varianda Vorski, Yanda Vara Yanda de Varsia, Tatatatatatia Shia. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Shevianda Vara de Leonda Vosava, Shevisha Varianda Vara de Sia, Savia Shia. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God, for hunger. I thank you, Father God, for hunger, that we hunger after the truth. We hunger after you. We hunger after your ways. We hunger, Father God, for that which only you are and only you can do and only you can give. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, only by your spirit. Only by your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, that we have your spirit, the precious, precious Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Shivian 
Hola de vara da sia, tata dia sia, tata de yam, bava, vivisa, vesa, vis, yanda vara da sia. Eri anta vola de vara da rara, yam, bava, se kisi visha vara da da da. Si vi anta vola de vara, la de vendi di anta rosha kia sia. Hila di anta vosha vasha kiri anta vara da sia, tata de dia sa, bidi yam, bara bidiya sia. Hila ana bara bia, shia buva se vi an. Si vi anta vosha kiri anta vara da vara da vara da vara da vara da sia, tata de dia sia. See if you end up all the way to da 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 da. See ya, see ya, see ya, see ya, see ya, see ya. Oh my, ba 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 ba. See ya, see ya, see ya, see ya. See if you end up all the way to da. She can't end up all the way to see ya. She can't over so far. See if you end up all the way to da. The veil is on, but what's the key to ya? See ya. Yeah, we are so young, but we are. She can't end up all the way to da. Most of the time, the key is the veil, and I'm not about to see ya. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that your plan was to live in man, to live in us. Hallelujah. Live in us and move and have your being in us and through us, that we would truly be your people. And I thank you, Father God, when we confess, with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that he was raised from the dead. We are saved, becoming your children. Hallelujah. Born again, born of the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 That we should no longer be ignorant of this life and those things that happen in this life and the attacks of the enemy and knowing the difference and knowing how to stand in the test of time. I thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you that you've given us your spirit. That we don't have to wonder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a good time to be praying. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whether you pray or not during the week, this is a good time to pray. We're in church, we pray. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Shaviyanda Valadasiya. Glory and honor and praise. Glory and honor and power and praise unto that name that's above every name that is named the name of Jesus. Glory and honor and power and praise. She onosa vasakidiasiya. Hallelujah. We worship you. We honor you, Father God. We honor you. We want our lives to be a living sacrifice and honor you with our lives, Lord God, with everything that we do and everything that we say that we would honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Well, you may go ahead and be seated. Thank God. God is awesome. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We were uh, um, driving the other day and coming up Victoria. And you can like, as you're coming down Victoria, you can see all the mountains. And, you know, it was real clear out. Just a beautiful view. And, um. As we were driving, I was, you know, just thinking about the Lord and thinking about, you know, when you have this private, intimate relationship with God that, you know, you talk to him and, you know, you're in your house or in your car, in your bedroom, you know, and you just talk to him in these small little places. And, um, but we can't forget when, when we um, talk to this God who was our father that he is the God of creation. And um, I was just 
as I was driving down and seeing all the mountains, I thought to myself, that intimate God that I serve in all the quiet places is the same God that made those mountains and made the sky to be blue and made the ocean, made the grass to grow and the trees to grow. And I thought, that's my father. My father is the God that made the stars and the moon and the sun and all the planets and the galaxies far, far beyond. <laughs> he, is, he is such a magnificent God. And I was just thinking about how magnificent he is and which compelled me to have to look up magnificent. I just kept thinking of the word magnificent. And there's such a depth to that word that just saying it sounds so <clears throat> shallow as compared to how deep that word really is. So I looked it up and I thought, well, I'm going to look up in the thesaurus and see what some, some synonyms are. Not cinnamon, but synonyms. And about um, that word magnificent and what it actually means the word magnificent, I'll, I'll give you some words. It means brilliant, elegant, excellent, glorious, grand, grandiose, imposing, impressive, lavish, lofty, noble, opulent, outstanding, palatial, splendid, stately, striking, sublime, sumptuous, superb, towering, arresting, commanding, elevated, ex exalted, fine, imperial, luxurious, magnanimous, magnific, <laughs> magnific, majestic, posh. <laughs> there's, no, there's no posh like our posh God. <laughs> He's radiant and regal, resplendent, rich, royal, smashing, standout, superior, superlative, swanky. <laughs> we serve a swanky God, and he's transcendent. And I was thinking about our God and how sometimes we forget that, that are, those are the attributes of our God. Amen. I'm going to start reading in Genesis, the very first chapter. And we need to see the magnificence of God, the God that we serve. And let me just say, the Holy Ghost within us is no less, no less brilliant, no, no, no less striking, no less majestic. He's no less magnificent, right? The Holy Ghost within us. We've got to remember, the Spirit of God is the same Spirit of God. He is God in the Spirit, right? And so we've got to remember that the Holy Ghost within us is God with us and dwelling in us, right? Can't forget that. So this God... <laughs> had these things written down so that we could thousands and thousands of years later be reading these same things over and over and over again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And Genesis 1-1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering. The Spirit, the same Holy Spirit, capital S. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Hmm. God said, let there be light. And there was light. 
God saw that the light was good and separate, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. He called the day, the light is the day and the darkness is the night. He called it that. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Verse 6, and God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. <laughs> Amen. Now this is, um, I'm not even sure, this is the NIV translation, but which, which year this that, that this was actually translated because, you know, they, they changed the translations. And so just reading that, um, I'm going to read that out of the, um, the English Standard, something most people don't have, but I'm going to read that, that verse uh, 6. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let them separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above in the, of the expanse. And it was so, and God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. Amen. So see, see that's how they come up with, they, they say there's, you know, like heavens, the, there's the heaven within our, is our atmosphere. You know, that's the sky, the blue sky, which we know it's just atmosphere. It's, it's not really blue. <laughs> we know that, right? <laughs> and so the, um, beyond that, like, uh, you know, it's, it's not like the, if you go out during the day that the universe is light. <laughs> it's dark. It, <clears throat> when you look out in the vast, it's, it's all dark. The only thing that makes it light on the earth, he made it so that the atmosphere would be, have, we'd have a blue sky, <laughs> which makes it light. Amen? Because he's so magnificent, he wanted us to have a light blue sky during the day. Right? And so that's what he did on the second day. So, and then on verse 9, it said, God said, let the water... Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let the dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land. He called it land. Amen. He called it land. So God called certain things by name, right? You're like, what does all this mean? Just hold your shorts. <laughs> so he called the dry ground uh, and uh, I'm going to start again. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and gathered waters and he called them the seas. And God saw that it was good. And then in verse 11, God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in them according to their various kinds. <clears throat> not GMOs. These are plants with seeds. <laughs> and it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky <clears throat> to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. Hmm. God put the stars in the sky to keep track of years and times and seasons, right? And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to keep the light on the earth. So in other words, <clears throat> we have uh, heaven, which is above, that goes the, 
the atmosphere around the earth. Then there's the, the second heaven, which is the universe itself. It is the universe. And then the heaven, which is the place in the spirit where God lives, but it is, is a real place. Amen? Because that existed before all of this existed. Because he was speaking from heaven and his throne where he lives. <laughs> he was speaking from that realm and that place and speaking all this matter into existence. So he said, God sent them to the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning. That was a fourth day. In verse 20, God said, Let the water teem with the living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the vault of the sky. So God created the um, great creatures of the sea and every living thing, with which the water teems and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds and livestock and, cr and cr the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals, which according to its kind. And it was so God made the wild animals according to their kind and the livestock according to their kind and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let there be let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over the livestock and over all the wild animals and over all the creatures and move along the ground. So God said when he was going to make these man to be in the image of God, he also said that he was going to make them that they may rule over that they may rule over. So God created all this, all of creation, and then he was going to make his prized possession that was going to manage and maintain and rule over all of his creation. Amen? He created it and then was going to put a man there, hum, humankind, mankind, to rule and to reign over this creation. Right? Right? So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. <laughs> Not it or him <laughs> or they, but he created them, male and female. No other, no other human being, no other mankind, but he created them as male and female, right? Right? Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth, subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every cre living creature that moves on the ground. And then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth, and to all the birds of the sky, and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath, <clears throat> of the breath of life in it, I give you every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was day, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array, by the seventh day, God had finished his work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. And then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the work he, of creating that he had done. And this is the account of the heavens and the earth. When they create, were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, so we can see what God had done. He created everything. Then he put 
mankind on the planet to rule and to reign and to name everything and gave him a job to do. And then in verse 5 of chapter 2, it says, Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, but he had already sowed all the seeds. <laughs> Hear what I'm saying? He already created all this, and it was as good as done because he said so. Right? But now all this greenery and these things hadn't showed up because it hadn't, it hadn't rained yet. Amen? But all he did was sow the seeds. All he did was sow the seeds, and it was as good as done. Yet nothing was visible, nothing could be seen. But he saw that it was good. Remember every time he did all this creating, he said he saw that it was good. Can we get, can we get an understanding? All he did was say it, and he saw that it was good. Even though right here it says no shrub had yet appeared on the earth. And no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent the rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground, but streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. God did a lot of saying before you and I might see it. But when God said it, he actually saw it and thought it was good. Right? Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden. There he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all the kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasant to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. See, God... God had made a garden for this man. Amen. And a river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there, it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is the Pishon. It, it, winds, it winds through the entire land of Havela, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good, aromatic resin, and... Uh, um, which that would be very interesting, wouldn't that? <laughs> Aromatic resin. And onyx also was there. The name of the second river was the Gion, and it winds through the entire land of um, Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris, and it runs along the east side of Asher, and the fourth river uh, is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden, to work it and take care of it. See, it, it, it wasn't just going to exist by itself. God's creation before the fall still needed to be tended to. Still needed to be worked, right? Before creation. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Amen. The Lord God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable to him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all of the wild animals. Now listen. Formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each, whatever the man called, whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock and the birds of the sky and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So that the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place uh, with flesh. And then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he, that he had taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man, and the man said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. 
Ab and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Okay, so we understand, um, we're just talking about creation. We're not going to go into the fall. But we want to get a picture of God and whoing what God told him to do. Amen? Let's look at Proverbs in chapter 18. Hallelujah. We're, we're very familiar with the whole idea of what a person says, right? How important it is. In Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 20, it says, From the fruit of their mouth a person's stomach is filled, and with the harvest of their lips they are satisfied. The tongue is the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Amen. We have to remember what God did in the beginning. God said, he said, he said, he said, and it was, and it was, and it was, and it was. There's no place that it says in the word that God thought and he thought and he thought and he thought and it was and it was and it was and it was. It said he said and he said and he said and he said and it was and it was and it was and it was. He doesn't think and think and think and think it and it was and it was and it was and it was. And so he's telling us exactly how we should be because we were made in his image to do exactly what he did and that was to say and to say and to say and to say and it'll be it'll be it'll be it'll be not to think and a think and a think and a think because it won't and it won't and it won't and it won't we've got to do and do and do what he said and say and say and say and it say it <laughs> You know, we're talking about believing and believing and believing and believing, but if you don't say it and say it and say it and say it, you won't have it, you won't have it, you won't have it, you won't have it. God in the beginning, he said it and said it and said it and said it, and it is and it is and it is and it is. Amen. We don't have, we don't have, we don't have, we don't have because we don't say, we don't say, we don't say, we don't say. And when we say and say and say and say, we say it amiss and we miss and miss. Because we don't believe, we don't believe, we don't believe, we don't believe what we say, what we say, what we say. Amen. We must believe it. We must believe it. We must believe, believe, believe what we say, what we say, what we say, what we'll have, we'll have, we'll have. Amen. Because God's word says from the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled and the harvest of their lips they are satisfied. The tongue is the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Because you got to say it, you got to say it, you got to say it, you got to say it. Because what you said, what you said, what you said, what you said is what you have, what you have, what you have, what you have. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12 out of the NIV says, For the word of God is live and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow, it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. What did Jesus do when the enemy came in? Any test, any trial, any attack, whether it's mental, whether it's physical, whether it's financial, no matter what the attack is, the people of God must be like God. We cannot be like the world. The, wor the word of God is so very clear that we should not be like this world. Do not think like this world. Do not talk like this world. Do not live like the world. Do not act like the world. Look through the scriptures. It tells us over and over again, don't speak like the world. Don't think like the world. Don't act like the world. Don't talk like the world. Over and over and over again. Because we will have what the world has, which is fear and lack. And Amen? And, and so we've got to... We've got to live how God in the beginning purposed for mankind to live, in charge, to rule and to reign. And how do you rule and reign? You gotta say, you gotta say, you gotta say, you gotta say. Amen. You gotta say it. Adam didn't just lay around thinking about, he called it. He called the cow a cow and a and a moose a moose and a deer and a deer. Amen. He called the apple an apple, an orange an orange, a banana a banana, an asparagus asparagus, bro broccoli broccoli. He called those things that are. He looked at it, and named it. And so what do we do? We got to look at it and name it. Remember when God said all those things, there still didn't appear a shrub or a bush. But he said it and he saw it was good. 
He said it, and he saw that it was good. Because this saying puts the seed in the ground. But he saw what the plant was going to look like when it was fully grown. Saying is the seed. Saying is the seed. You have to say it, you have to say it, say it, say it, say it. Saying is a seed. Saying is a seed. Amen. If you don't see a plant yet, take joy, shout victory, because all you got to do is say, say the seed, say the seed, say the seed, say the seed. You'll have the harvest. You'll have the harvest. Amen. Don't be moved by time. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. It's very plain. It's very clear that it's the word of God. What does God say? We can't just haphazardly throwing things around, find out what God's word says. You got to say what God's word says. By his stripes, I am healed. There's so many different scriptures on healing. There's so many just different scriptures. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. Amen. We just have to remember what the word says and say what it says. When, when Jesus was tempted of the devil, when he was in the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights and when satan came and tried to tempt him what did how did he handle the devil he showed us exactly how to handle the devil and his lies you tell him what is written you tell him it was written if you want to start by saying and he was thrown into the lake it is written he was thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever <laughs> it's a good place to start. Mr. Devil, you want to talk about you want to talk about this life? You want to talk about me? You want to talk about my God? You want to talk about what my God's not going to do or can't do? Let me first talk about what he's going to do. He's going to throw you in the lake of fire for all eternity. There's a good start. And then I'll tell you what else. He's going to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. And I'm going to say it because it is so. It is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Amen. You can't think it. Don't think it. Don't think it. And don't ink it. Say it and say it and say it. Amen? You got to say it and say it. Get those seeds in the ground. Keep putting those seeds in the ground, and you will surely have a harvest. And don't just say, well, I'm hoping if I sow a seed, something might happen. No. Sow it. Sow it and grow it and sow it and grow it and sow it and grow it. Amen? Hallelujah. How do you do, how do, you do that? You know, you got to water those seeds. Not pull them back out of the ground. We got to water those seeds. I thank you, Lord God. Just water that seed. I thank you, Lord God, for your word is true. Let the water, let, let the rain of the Holy Ghost water that seed as you glorify and thank and worship and honor God by obedience and prayer or meditating on the things and doing what he says. Just let him water. Just glorify him and the water will come down. Amen. Let it rain. 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 After you say it and say it and say it and let it rain. And you surely have a harvest. Amen? Hallelujah. It's just simple. It's, there's, no, there's no new magic trick. <laughs> there's no new scientific way. It's the same as it was on page one. <laughs> Amen? Say it is so what it is written say it say it is written that my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory hallelujah there's nothing that can be compared to the riches of the glory of god amen hallelujah well i hope you got something out of there Did anybody want to say what they got out of it <laughs> anybody want to just shout it out what did you get Anybody? Yes. <laughs> it's, there's nothing new under the sun. Yes. Yes. Harvest. Say it and say it and say it and say it. You'll see it. You'll see it. See, he said. He said it. And he said it was good. Just with the seed in the ground. Hallelujah. You know, it's just like in the 
all the work that they do in all these fields around here and they're sowing all those seeds and putting all those seeds in the ground. They don't go home and cry and think, oh my gosh, we're not going to have any strawberries. No, they got the seed in the ground. They're expecting a harvest. Get the, get the, get the seed in the ground. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Father God, for your wonderful word and that we can say what your word says and we will have what you promised. Thank you, Father God, that you are not a man that you can lie. It's impossible for you to lie. So we thank you, Father God. We're going to hold on to your truth. Your truth is the only truth. And we're holding on to it. And we're going to say what you say. Amen. In Jesus' name. Everybody agreed, said, hallelujah. Well, that encouraged me, y'all. <laughs>